Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody do yourself a favor. If you love Jesus, give him your loudest hallelujah this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, choir. God bless you, guys. God bless you, everyone. I, I, I love that song because of the wordings of the song. It said, we lift you up. Look at the neighbor and say, I lift up Jesus alone. You know the beautiful thing about lifting up Jesus? It said, the word of God said, when we lift him up, he will draw men unto himself. When you lift up Jesus, something happens. When he was lifted up on the cross of Calvary, the enemy was defeated. Every time we lift up Jesus, there is always an impact in the realm of the spirit. So, Lord, we lift you up. Come on, give them a big round of applause one more time. That was awesome. That was awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away. That was awesome. God bless you. Amen. All right. Wow. I know now you are physically exhausted, so that can be taken out of it. But you are spiritually renewed. Now, the thing is, when you are spiritually renewed, it should have an impact on your physical exhaustion. Amen. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. I know we have spent ourselves, we've, you know, given so much of ourselves. And God, did God, did God re recompense us yesterday? Yes, he did. That was a mighty visitation. I mean, one of the things that have been very high in my heart is going forward with SFOP and I was saying to myself, that Lord, we need helpers of destiny. We need resources, human resources, finances, and all of that. And you know, after the program, some ministers approached me and said that they, he said they wanted to, to pledge their support to the point that they said their ministry will also be carrying the financial burden of SFOP going forward. Give the Lord a big hand for that. They were so, they were so passionate about it. They came and said, look, we are in this together. We don't want it to just be mere words. That from the moment you fix the date for next year, which has already been fixed anyway, I will tell you today. Amen. He said, we want to be part of it. We want to start with you, plan, make sure that we do things the way it's supposed to be done. And for me, I felt that that was God answering my prayers. There's no one with a divine assignment that will not require physical helpers. You always need help. Even as a human being, to get here this morning, you were helped. Either you came by bus or you came by your car. You were helped. Or you came by the church bus. You were helped one way or the other. And I, I pray that we will never lack helpers in Jesus' name. Before I preach this morning, I want to specially, once again, I know I've done it yesterday, but I want to thank every one of you. I want you to know that whatever you have done, I can't stand here and be mentioning one by one. We will not leave here today. But I want you to know that whatsoever you have done towards SFOP, God Almighty will reward you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Some of you, you have given so much in terms of money. Even the money you gave, you knew was out of what you don't have much. But still yet, you sacrifice and you gave. I pray that God will send helpers to you in your moment of need in the name of Jesus. We almost did not hold SFOP 2024 because there was just so much on our table in terms of commitment on all sides. And we were beaten from every side. And I was saying to myself, that's why it took us some time before we even announced it. I had to pray, Lord, should we? But when I realized through the help of my wife, it made me realize that this, this is a vow. This is a mandate. I said, yes. And I went to God in prayer and I felt that I needed to keep my own part of the mandate. And which is to hold the program. God's own part is to visit us. And God did it marvelously yesterday. And I felt in my heart that that SFOP 2024 is the beginning of the second phase of SFOP. Because that's the 11th what? 11th year. We have finished 10 years. 11 is the beginning of another phase. And I sure tell you, we'll be holding a bigger place next year in Jesus' name. <laughs> So give yourself a big hand, everyone. Thank you. Those of you, ah, come on, clap for yourself. Everyone, clap for yourself. Clap for yourselves. God bless you. 
those who gave, those who cooked, those who sold, make t-shirts, those who prepared for the children, every one of you, the musician, the technical, oh, lovely, God bless you, media team, technical team, everyone, even those who did what we did not see and what we did not know, God bless you in the name of Jesus. I appreciate every single one of you, uh, and I, I, I pray that the Lord God Almighty will definitely make, between now and next SFOP, a year full of a turnaround blessings in Jesus' name. So let me look at the neighbor say, Nene, on behalf of Bishop, thank you for all you do for the kingdom of God. Say, God will not forget you. Amen. All right, so I'm going to speak briefly this morning because I know your prayer for me is to let you go home on time because you want to catch up. <laughs> I, I, I know your prayer. It's not the Holy Ghost that told me. It's me that told myself. <laughs> so that you can f at least catch some rest before work tomorrow morning. I know, I know. You can be well assured that I know. I have a very early work tomorrow morning too. Amen. <laughs> but the thing about God's presence is that you just love God's presence. Matthew chapter 3, quickly, verse 13 to 17. Matthew 3, verse 13 to 17. I, 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 I went to the Lord. I said, what am I saying this morning? You've done so much yesterday, and he gave me this word for you. Matthew 3, 13 to 17. Then come Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John. I like that progression. It's not today's message, but I love the progression. He came to Galilee, then to Jordan, then to John. To be baptized of him, but John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. He was being spiritual. And, com and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Say with me, everyone. Securing an open heaven. One more time. Say, securing an open heaven. That's the title of the message. Shall we pray? Father, thank you because you have decided to visit us as a church. And you visited us yesterday and we're looking forward to your visitation again today. I thank you for that which you did yesterday. I thank you for the miracles that's already been given and delivered to all that participated in SFOB 2024. I thank you for your grace that is also available for those things to come to pass. I thank you, Lord, for the doors that have been opened. Lord, today, receive our thanks in Jesus' name. I now come to you, Lord, asking as we go into your word that you will help me to present this word in a way that will bath faith, courage, and boldness, Lord, and hope in the heart of every hearer in the name of Jesus. For those who are downcasted, those who are heavy in spirit, those who are depressed, Lord, I ask, let a good word come to them that will cause their heart to be strengthened. And cause them to go into this week, Lord, believing you that the best is yet to come. I give you praise and glory, for in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Satan, you have no portion here, I hold you bound in the name of Jesus. If you believe the prayer, say a big amen. amen. Somebody shout with me, open heavens, open heavens. is my portion. Is my portion. All right. Securing an open heaven. One of the things that I've come to realize about work, working with God or having a relationship with God is that we all trust God by the virtue of that relationship to enjoy the blessings of God. It is one of the things, one of the reasons why many of us who are Christians serve God. I know we serve him because we love him, yes. I know we serve him because we know him, yes. Some of us serve him because we enjoy the fact that he is, we can call him our father, yes. But another major reason why we serve him is because we expect his blessing to come into our lives. Ephesians 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We all want to be blessed. In Psalm 2, if you read verse 8, he said, Ask of me, and I will give you the heathen for thy inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for your possession. We want that possession. We want that blessing. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. So if there's anything at all that causes us or inspires us to serve God, it's so that we can be blessed. But I also realize in my work with God, not only are we serving God for the purpose of being blessed, but I also realize that one thing that guarantees that blessing is an open heaven. Someone shout open heaven. <laughs> now, the open heaven, let me tell you what that simply means. It simply signifies a thorough or unrestricted access to God and his blessings. Without an open heaven, no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you fast, no matter how much you trust God, From 2 1, no thing, nothing. There is nothing that comes to any man except it's given him from heaven. May God give you something this week from heaven. I don't know who you are talking I'm talking to right now, but that person probably is from this way. But if you are here, may God give you something from heaven. The Bible said in the book of James 1 17, every good and every perfect gift cometh down from above. If it's not coming from above, it's not coming to you. One man of God made a statement. He said, God called him to a ministry. That's Bishop Oyedepo many years ago. He said, God called him into a ministry. And he wanted to go abroad to be trained, to know, to, to be taught, and all of that. He said, but he went to God to pray. And before he went, he said, he has packed all his luggages to travel. He said, but he went to God to pray. He said, Lord, I'm going, I'm committing my way to you. And God said, I'm not asking you to go. He said, my son, David, listen to this very carefully. What you need to equip you for ministry is not coming from abroad, it's coming from above. I want you to understand that what you need to perfect that which concerns you is not coming from abroad, it's coming from where? Above. A man receives nothing. I prophesy open heaven over you. Give your neighbor a high five. Say, ah, that word is for me. I don't know about you, but that word is for me. When the heaven over our lives is closed, Everything around our lives will not work. When the heaven over your life is closed, you will labor like an elephant, you will eat like an ant. When the heaven over your life is closed, you will struggle so much, more than others are working, and yet you will bring in so little. Even the little you bring in, there will be a hole in your pocket that will take it away from you. When the heaven is closed, it's a curse when the heaven is closed. Deuteronomy 28, if you read verse 23, Deuteronomy 28 verse 23, let me read it to you. I don't want to quote it, I want to read it to you. Deuteronomy 28 verse 23, he said, And thy heavens that is over thy head shall be what? Brass. That's how I know. That means close. You know what brass means? Brass is something that is, that is a matter that will not allow things to flow. He said, the heavens over your head shall be brass. It's a curse. He said, and the earth that is under your feet, he said, it shall be what? iron. The moment the heaven is closed, the earth will not yield for you. But that is changing today. Amen. Yesterday we enjoyed an open heaven. I said that open heaven continue with you. Amen. Say to yourself, say, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. A man receives nothing, nothing, except is given him from above. You know the reason why John made that statement? Let me just give you a contextual understanding. Jesus before Jesus came, John was the one baptizing. He was the one baptizing the people. And many people will go to John. The Pharisees will go to John. The bishop will go to John. The uh, canon will go to John. The pastors will go to John. Everybody was going to John. Then Jesus showed up on the scene. And then Jesus began to also baptize down the road. You know, sometimes I tell people, there is nothing like one church for the whole world. God will always start visions and missions from places to places. But you need to realize this. You cannot afford to allow somebody's blessing to cause you to be insecure. You can't afford because, what, let me say this to you. Whatever God is doing for someone, God can do much more for you. So the, John now began to baptize. So when John was baptizing people, and now more, sorry, Jesus was baptizing people, more people are now going to Jesus. 
So the, the, apostles, the disciples of John were a bit like, uh -uh, what is happening here? Is this not the friend of our pastor? How come he's still in our ship? <laughs> Amen. So they went to John and said, ah, the one that you said that you identify and validated, he's now baptizing down the road from us. And then John, and many people are going to him. John looked at them and said, listen to me. A man receives nothing. What you are seeing there is God doing it. A man receives what? Nothing. Except it's given to him from where? Above. If you are insecure about the blessing of God in somebody's life, go and get your own. Okay, you missed that. There is enough blessing for you, for me, for every single 7 billion people plus on this face of the earth, that after we are all blessed, we will still not be in each other's ways. Okay, you missed that. Tell number say, my blessing is next. No, say that somebody will believe, say, my own blessing is next. Say, there is open heaven over me. When God opens the heaven, he pours you out a blessing. That's why I'm trusting God that in this second part of the year, you will operate under open heaven. What we enjoyed yesterday was open heaven. God opened the heavens over us. The presence was felt, and people came of their own volition to pledge their own support without asking them. They even went beyond our ministry, our churches. We want to be there. We want to be given from the beginning to the end. We want to, one woman said, Sir, we are in this together. Someone said, We're in this together. When you begin to see favor you did not ask for, then heaven is opened over you. Tap somebody and give them a high five. Say, heaven is opened over me. The open heavens in Isaiah 45, verse 8. The New Living Translation. I love the New Living. The King James did not say it this way, but the New Living Translation says, open up all heavens. Somebody shout, open up all heavens. He said, open up all heavens and pour out your righteousness. Let the earth open wide. You see, when the heaven opens, the earth has no choice but to what? Open. I prophesy to the earth upon which you stand uh, that the heavens over you be open and the earth beneath you begin to yield a strength. Uh, it will yield for you greatly. It will yield for you abundantly. It will yield for you massively. It will yield for you continuously in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout open heavens. When the heavens are open, the earth will open wide. He said the heart, he said let the heavens be open and the earth be open what? Be open wide. Because there's so much that God wants to give us some of his blessings, but the heavens have to be open over us. Jesus was coming out. I'm going to go there very soon and break it down for you. What happened to Jesus there? He was coming out and then the heaven opened and his story was different from everybody who was baptized. Anyone this week hear me today. Hear me very well. Anyone this week, whether you are online or you are here in person, under the sound of my voice, I prophesy over your life, over your career, open heavens. Open heavens. And so shall it be. When God opens the heaven, treasures are given. Because it's a thorough pathway to God and God's blessings. In Deuteronomy 28, again, verse 12. God says something about open heaven then. I want to read it. Deuteronomy 28 verse 12 from the King James. He said, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. <laughs> what, where is that good treasure? The heavens. Someone said the heaven. The heaven to give thee rain. Now, you may not understand why God is always talking about rain when it comes to Israel. It's because the Israelites were in a desert. If you are in a desert, a rain is a blessing. If you're in a desert, rain is what? A blessing. It was so hot on Friday. How many of you felt the sun on Friday? It was the hottest day of the year thus far, according to the people of that, that watches the weather. Now, by, by Saturday, I just peeped out of my window, and I saw a bit of showers. And you will see how happy I was. Not just because of SFOP, but because we can breathe the sense of relief. Cooler here, air rather. Cooler air flowing in our direction. And I put my head near the window that I could feel the breeze. I said, if I can appreciate showers in this place, how much more those who are in the desert, no Thames waters, no waves waters, no Essex and Suffolk waters to supply, no Kanji Dam. Are you with me, somebody here? And, and then they have to trust God for what? For rain. Rain was all they trusted, they needed for water. Rain was the only way they can get wet, get soaked, get refreshed. So when God said, I will open the heavens, 
The heavens will give you treasure. And the first treasure was rain. So I am here to say to you, I don't know what your own desert is like. But there is something you are in where you need something very badly for. I decree and declare, whatever makes your desert refreshing, whatever makes that desert refreshing, may God open the heavens over you and give you that treasure. I say he will give you that treasure. If you believe it, shout your loudest amen. He said, I will open thee unto thee, my good treasure, the heaven to give thee rain unto the land in its season, and to bless all the work of thy hands. That's what I love. When the heavens are open, all the works of your hands are what? They are blessed. If you do two hours somewhere, they will bless you much more. If you do five hours somewhere, they will bless you much more. There is something about an open heaven that affects everything. Some few days ago, we had in the old world what was called digital outage. For those of you who work with computers, you understand what I'm talking about. A particular third party company that was supplying or part of the support force for Microsoft did an update and did not go through very well. Maybe they didn't have enough testers to test it. I don't know. Amen. Or quality control people to test it, to look at it. I don't know. But the fact was that the moment it went wrong, do you know that the entire world felt it? It was felt as far as Australia. This company was in Austin, Texas. And it was felt everywhere. The airport, uh, over 5,000 flights canceled. People lost money. People were affected by one simple button on a computer. Now, God says, I want to bless you. <laughs> you want, God's about to press a button on your behalf. Are you hearing me, somebody here? When he does it for you, hear me. The whole world will hear about you. Do you know that when we talk about the blessing of God, it's not a good salary? No, no. Good salary is good. The blessing of God goes beyond what? Good salary. The blessing of God is when you become absolutely important to anything and everything that is significant in life. That even kings need to see you. Look at Abraham. Kings came. They once come to meet him. Look at Jacob. Kings came to meet him. Look at Isaac. If Jacob was so blessed that he became richer than the CEO of the company. The CEO, Laban, has to say that the Lord has blessed me because of you. When you are blessed, you are blessed. And open heaven guarantees that. He said, I will bless the works of your hand. Without the heavens being opened, you will labor, there will be no blessing. But from today, the heavens over you is hereby open. Someone say, I receive it in Jesus' name. You see Malachi, hallelujah. You see Malachi 3 verse 10. The Bible says, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that I may be meet in my house and prove me. Why do we pay tithe? He said, prove me here with, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, the windows of heaven, the windows of heaven, and then pour you out a blessing, your amen has gone low now. <laughs> that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Is God a liar? Is God a liar? Somebody answer me. It, does God lie? So if he said there will not be room enough, there will not be room enough. He will bless you with so much, there will not be room enough. Are you hearing me, somebody here? It will come in quantum fold because of an open heaven. Jesus came out and the heavens opened. Some of you are living here with an open heaven. Praise the Lord, somebody. Now quickly as I begin to tie this up, let's start looking at some fact and truth about an open heaven. Number one, the first thing you must know about an open heaven is this. An open heaven experience is a personal encounter. I'll say it one more time. An open heaven experience, write it down, is a personal encounter. I will explain it to you. Matthew 3, our text, verse 16 to 17. Come and see this. And Jesus, I read, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water. Lo, someone say lo. The word lo means behold. The heavens were opened unto. Shout the next word, please. Him. Can you put it on the screen, guys? Matthew 3, verse 16 to 17, quickly. You should hear me and do that as fast as possible. Matthew 3, thank you. 
Now, he said, Lord, the heavens were opened unto who, please? Him. But the scripture tells us there were many people that were being baptized there. But when the heaven opened, it was opened to who? Him. There is something about the open heavens of God that it can open unto you and, op and not open to your next neighbor. Open heaven experience is a personal encounter. That there can be 10 people in a family and one person will enjoy it. There were many people in the family of Jabez, but the Bible said Jabez was the most honorable. Among your peers, I declare, by open heaven you shall be called honorable. Somebody shout, me. Oh, I didn't hear you very well. Please, wherever you are, shout, me. So he said, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove. Lightning upon what? Him. It was a personal encounter for him. He was him. That's why I always tell people this. God cannot make mistakes to give somebody your blessing. No way. It has to come to you. The heavens, two men, two young boys were brought to Jacob. The sons of, J of Joseph. One was by the name Manasseh. The other one was by the name Ephraim. And the Bible says that Manasseh was the first child and that Ephraim was the second boy. So when Joseph brought them to Jacob to be blessed, he put Manasseh where the right hand of jo Jacob was and he put Ephraim where the left hand of Jacob was. Because he knows that by doing so, he will, the, he will lay his right hand on Manasseh. But the scripture tells me, the heaven was opened over Ephraim. They were positioned by men. But when it was time to bless, God crossed his hand. Whosoever has been put in a position that belongs to you, don't be scared. The heavens shall be opened over your life. And shall be crossed over your lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, I receive it. It's my blessing. Nobody else can take it. Nobody else can take it. Somebody say it's mine. Somebody say it's mine. It's personal. It has to do with you and nobody else. When God gives you an open heaven, that's why I always tell people this. Please, don't look at someone's attitude to serve God. Because when it comes to blessing, God will make it personal. He will make it personal. He will not look at the person next to you. He will not look at the person in front of you. He will look at you directly. He said, I want to bless you. I want the heavens to be open over you. We can be 10,000 seated. But when the heaven open, only men like David get the spirit of God. The Bible said there were other sons in the place. They were all lined up. But the heaven did not open over any of them. But when David came into the room, the heavens opened. Then God spoke. This is he. I say, in this particular second part of the year, you will meet with divine validation. You will meet with divine approval. You will be preferred where others are referred. In the name of Jesus. Give somebody a high five. Say, I receive an open heaven. Sit down. Sit down. I receive an open heaven. Somebody say, I receive an open heaven. It's a person. An open heaven experience is a personal encounter. Number two, quickly. Let me give you one or two more. I'm going somewhere, please. Securing an open heaven. That's what I'm talking about. Securing an open heaven. So that when they have done an exam, the heaven is open over your works. So that when they are marking the paper, they will not make mistakes. Are you hearing me? Your paper will not find its way to the wrong hands. When you apply for a job and you are called for an interview, whosoever should not be there will not be there. Anyone that will resist you, want to cause you any havoc, will not be present on that day. Because the heavens are open over you. you are, get ready, there's somebody here, you're about to be promoted. Now, everything around you does not say, but I'm saying as a prophet of God, you will be promoted. A promotion that will have a major impact on whatever your pay package is. Uh, receive it in the name of Jesus. Uh, divine promotion, supernatural promotion. I declare it over your lives. Open heavens. Some of the open heavens. The heavens are open. Number two, another fact about open heaven is this. When the heavens are open over you, you will have access to visions and revelations. You will see things that people don't see naturally. In Matthew 3.16, our text again, the Bible said Jesus, when he was baptized, put it on the screen, thank you. When he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water. And Lord, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw, Thomas said he saw. Come on, shall say he saw. 
you are about to start seeing. The reason why many of us, our faith is weak is because we are hearing it, but we are not seeing. If you look at the word of God, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1, he said, I will stand upon my watch. I will watch to see what he will say. There is a need for us to see things. And it's only by open heaven that we see things. There's a need for people who experience open heavens, they saw things. You will see into the realm of the spiritual so that whatever is happening in the realm of the physical does not move you. You have seen it. When Jesus showed up before John, John said, I have already seen this. For he who sent me said, upon whom the spirit of God descend like a dove, that is the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. So when Jesus showed up and he saw the dove come, he said, and this is, he saw it before he saw it. My father and the Lord always says, you need to see it before you see it or else you will never see it. We need to start seeing things. See your future. So that when the devil is trying to mesmerize you with your presence, they keep quiet. I've already seen it. Martin Luther King said, I have been to the mountain top and I have seen I have on, on the other side of the mountain that will come a time when in this White House, an African-American president shall come. When he was saying it, there was no way. Because of the state of things in America then, no way. But 40-something years after, the Bible tells us uh, that the man chosen by God stepped out of that same white house, uh, African America. Are you hearing me, somebody here? Whatever God has shown you will come to pass. Uh. God does not show pictures. He shows visions. He shows visions. I have seen, I have seen it. A young man, my wife and I, I was telling someone recently, a young man and his wife, some years ago, we were talking to them, and they were crying because they didn't have a child. And my wife said, do you know, we prayed with them. Then overnight, God gave my wife a vision and saw them carrying their babies. And my wife said, I saw you carrying babies. I saw you carrying babies. They said, how? I said, I don't know how. But years after, God gave them the babies. God does not joke with visions. Joel 2.28, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. From today, may you begin to see. The problem with Christians is that we have very few Christians who see. God told Abraham, stand, lift up your eyes. For as far as you can see, I will give it to you. Joshua 6 verse 1, at Jericho, God said to Joshua, lift up your eyes. See, I have given you the city. I have given you all the valiant men. I have delivered the kings to you. When God was saying that, the city was still intact. Oh, Shanda Kabayo Daraba. Somebody said, I want to begin to see. But that's what open heaven guarantees. Open heaven guarantees. Have you seen yourself in your house? Or you are still seeing yourself in the way you are living in right now? Oh, no, no. Eyes have not seen. Because it's not with physical eyes that you will see this. These are visions and revelations. The Bible says when the heavens open, he saw. The heavens, when they open over you, from tonight you will begin to see. You will see your wedding before the marriage day. You, okay, you missed that. <laughs> you will see your marriage rather before the wedding day. You will see your, your personal business and with the employers that, employees that you have employed before you even register a company. You will see your lifting even though it seems as if you're on the same level right now. You will see your progression even though you are experiencing stagnation right now. I pray in the name of Jesus. Uh, if you believe those words are coming out of my mouth uh, as a prophet of God, I declare open heaven over you to confirm it, to validate it, to bring it to pass, to ensure it, to establish it in the name of Jesus. Uh, give somebody a high five and say, I receive it. young man in this church many years ago. He didn't even have a job. He didn't even have a job. His wife was not, did not even have a good job. They were struggling. And then in the service, the Lord told me, said, tell him, you're going to be a millionaire. God's going to bless you. You've got to see it. The time when God speaks to people, nothing on the around us, nothing on the horizon at all can support it. In fact, you will look at them and pity them. These people are either mad or insane. Because whatever it is they are saying, they definitely don't know what's going on in the economy. When God speaks, economy will comply. Are you hearing me? Economy will what? Comply. God will put you in a position where you'll be required. 
Do you remember that my daughter's testimony yesterday? Three years of looking for a job, none. But after SFOP, by that week they said, we have been looking for someone like you. So where has, he, where has she been? The prize opened up the heaven. They will find you where they need you. Your businesses will be found where they are needed. Open heavens. Someone say open heavens. A man. This happened this week. A man, 92 years old, has been playing piano for about 30 years of his life. 92, and nobody knew him. Nobody even recognized him. At 92, somebody just had him playing and videoed it and put it on Instagram. And then it went viral. And he said, can you imagine, for 30 years I was not known. In one piece, at the age of 92, the whole world is now asking for me. Now they want him to come here, come there, come and play. At 92, because they are shocked that at 92, a man can still move his finger that fast. There is something about you. Maraso kaliande parata, rikato shekeyandada, rukataya, that the light of God will shine upon. This month, this week, this side of the year, and we project you in the name of Jesus. And you know what? We facilitate it. Shout it. One, two, go. Open. Hallelujah. At 92, he's known. He said, now all my girlfriends are afraid. Can you imagine? He said, everybody now wants me in Switzerland, in Sweden. They want to pay for the ticket. Everybody wants to hear me. He said, I'm still playing the same thing I was playing for 30 years. At 92, if it's not over for him, it's not over for you. You will not have to wait till 92. It is only this part of the year. Whatever God has shown you, you will see it in your hand. Hold it in your hand. In the name of Jesus. Look at number say, I have open heaven. Because when the heavens are open, we see. We need to see things. So that we can look at what we are seeing and tell them, Metronu. I'm sorry about that, speaking in tongues. At least keep quiet. One man sang a song in my local dialect. He said, what is in the bush that is, that is doing... Mm, 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 mm. Okay, Maru, 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 Maru. I'm, I'm, what's the English for Maru, Maru? What's the English word for Maru, Maru? Noise. Uh -huh. What is in the bush that is making noise? Woo, 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 woo. And does not show up. If you want to kill us, come out and kill us. And start making woo, 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 woo. And if you're not going to kill us, shut up. And let us go our own way. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody say, I've seen it. You need to see it. The problem of the servant of Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 6 was that he could not see. He was living with the most anointed man on the earth, but yet he could not see. This is not by association. Are you hearing me? It's by personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He could not see it, and that was why he was being messed up. That was why the people surrounding them were causing him to fear, because he could not see. So Elisha said, I will solve your problem. Father, Open his eyes that he may see. I pray that God will open the heavens and then open your eyes. Amen. Do you know that the darkest hour of the day is only a second before the morning? 12 midnight. By the time it's 12.01, is that not morning time? It's 12 midnight, but 12.01 a.m. The darkest part of your life is the, is the, is the closest part to your breakthrough. I can't take it anymore. It's because it's about to happen. Have you seen a woman in delivery? Natural delivery? It's when they say, no. <laughs> and the midwife say, just push, just push. And then the baby, it's because the baby was already in the bath canal. Your miracle is in the bath canal. It's closer than you believe. The reason why you can't sleep, you are crying, you are weeping, you are tired, you are screaming. You are, it's because it is close. Someone say it is close. When the pain is higher, the gain is closer. When the pain is higher, the gain is what? It's closer. Ezekiel chapter 1, come and see this. When the heavens are open, people see visions. You will begin to see things the way they are supposed to be. In Ezekiel 1, Verse 1 to 3. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day, oh my God, my time is up. In the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives, someone say among the captives. 
Look at this. Among the captives by the river of Sheba. So there were other people that were there, but they were in captivity. He said, and the heavens were open. Even for those who are in captivity, the heavens were what? Open. And the heavens were open. And I saw visions of who? Of God. Today, Matusa, Lekete, the 21st of July, mark the beginning of your spiritual eyes being opened to see where you will be in 5, 10, 15, 20 years time that will give you faith to go through and endure whatever you are going through right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at Hebrews 12 verse 2. Looking unto Jesus. I've got to close. Can you play that keyboard for me? I've got to close. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him. So Jesus has seen the joy. You are experiencing the pain. You need to see your joy. Your joy is always before you. You need to see your joy. It will not be like this forever. Okay, you missed that. I said, it will, in your life, it will not be like this forever. Listen, all those credit cards, I don't know, pay them off. One idea. Oh. Sheikh Alabayada. I was listening to President Trump recently in his address to his party. And there was a, a, a man who unfortunately took the bullet for him in a way and died. That man was not known. Has never been known. But that man is now known all over America today. Now, when I say all over America, I'm talking about 300 million people. Now, he said that they are giving them six million, they're giving the family six million dollars. They raised six million dollars for that family. That family has never seen one hundred thousand dollars in their life. Then he said, but listen, somebody gave me a check for them today. He put it down in his pocket and brought it out. Open it. Oh, one million dollars. I can imagine now. I know it's painful to lose the man. Are you hearing me? You will not have to die to get your own blessing. Are you hearing me? But the fact is this: one thing that took place in that family for the rest of their lives. <laughs> one act of God. Who won one act of God? One act of who? Of God. It was one dream that Joseph interpreted. Not two. Not for two people. Just for one person. In the palace. Where you will matter the most. The heavens open over you will bring you there. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. I've got to close. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Now, wherever you are, lift up your two hands and pray this prayer. Father... Open the heavens over my life. Now begin to pray that prayer. Begin to pray that prayer for yourself. Open it. Come on, pray. Open heavens. I can't finish the sermon, but just keep praying that prayer. Open. Those of you online, pray that prayer. Open the heavens. Those of you in the overflow, pray that prayer. Open the heavens over me, oh God. Open the heavens over my career. Open the heavens over my life. Open the heavens over me. Let me begin to see like I ought to see. Let me begin to see like I ought to see. Let me begin to see like I ought to see. Let me begin to see like I ought to see. Let me begin to see like I ought to see. Rekato sandala la da ba la da ba ha. Rekete sada yanda robosha. Rekete se poli anda gabaha. Thank you, Jehovah Lord. I give you praise and glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Next week Sunday, don't miss it. We are going to be taking the communion. I'm going to be finishing this sermon if the Lord permits. And then we're going to be taking the communion. And I'm going to be praying for you. Specially because I believe strongly in the power of open heavens. When the heavens are open, the earth will open wide. Don't miss it next Sunday. Don't miss service. Don't miss service. I know it's going to be Thanksgiving service. So don't miss it. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray for every single person here. Let the heavens be open over them in the name of Jesus. Over their careers in the name of Jesus. Over their family and businesses in the name of Jesus. Your business will not be lost in social media. 
Other business will not override your business. The heavens will be opened over yours. Yours is what they will see. You are the one they will be looking for. You are the one they will recognize. Because the heavens are opened over you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every head by your eyes closed. If you have heard me this morning or afternoon, afternoon, and you want to give your life to Jesus, you are here or online, please say this prayer after me. Say, dear Lord God, I come to you today as a sinner to receive the forgiveness of my sins. The ones I know and the ones I can't remember. Wash me clean with the blood of your son Jesus. For I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. If you have prayed that prayer, hear me. Look for a full Bible-believing church where you can be discipled, taught the word of God, and be prepared for heaven. If you are close by to us here where we are in the United Kingdom, we're in a place called Barking, it's CCLC House of Mercy, 57 River Road, Thamesview, Barton, IG 110 Delta Alpha. Join us. You can go to our website, www.cclcuk.org, where you can get more information. And I know your lives will never remain the same. And you will enjoy open heavens in Jesus' name. And everyone that believes that there's an open heaven over them, shout an amen. You may be seated.